Still using pivot tables the old way? It's time to level up. Discover eight advanced pivot table techniques that will transform your data analysis, boost your productivity, and make your reports more insightful and dynamic. Let's dive in. First, prepare the data set. Here's a new data set, Purchase Transactions. It's packed with insights we can unlock using advanced pivot table techniques. Let's format this data as an Excel table. Use the shortcut Control plus T and make sure my table has headers is checked. Then format the date and values. and freeze the top row. Technique one, group ages and visualize sales with pivot table, pivot chart, and slicer. Now, let's insert a pivot table. Click anywhere inside the data set. Go to the insert tab on the ribbon. Click pivot table. Ensure the selected range is correct. Choose existing worksheet and select a location. Click okay. Pivot tables help you summarize thousands of rows in seconds. Next, add fields to the pivot table. In the pivot table fields pane, drag age to the rows area, drag purchase amount to the values area. Next, group the ages into ranges. Right click on any age in the pivot table. Select group. In the dialog, starting at 20, ending at 60, by 10, click OK. Now you'll see age groups like 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. Excel auto adjusts based on your data, but you can customize these ranges. Next, insert a pivot chart. To visualize age-wise sales, let's add a pivot chart. Go to Pivot Table Analyze tab. Click Pivot Chart. Choose a chart type column chart. Click OK. Charts make it easier to communicate your analysis in dashboards or reports. Next, now let's add a slicer to filter this pivot table by gender. Slicers are great for interactive filtering. Click anywhere in your pivot table. Go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab. Click Insert Slicer. In the list, check Gender. Click OK. Now you can filter your pivot table and chart to see how different age groups perform by gender. Now that we've grouped numerical data like age ranges, next, let's explore another powerful technique, creating custom categories from text fields using manual grouping. Technique two, grouping items into custom categories. Let's insert a pivot table. Go to the insert tab, pivot table, choose existing worksheet and select a location. Click okay. Drag shipping type to the rows area. Drag purchase amount to the values area. Drag season to the columns area. Now, to simplify the shipping types, we'll group them. Hold control and select overnight. Same day delivery and next day air. Right click group. Rename this group to express. Select the remaining types, group them and name the group standard. In the field list, a new field appears as shipping type two. Right click it, field settings, rename it to shipping level. You can now remove the shipping type and drag category into the rows area. To analyze data by product category instead of shipping method, Use this technique when you want to simplify detailed options, like shipping methods, into broader categories for clearer analysis. Technique three, visualize pivot values with data bars and smart filters and slicers. Insert a new pivot table. Add category to the rows item purchased below it, and purchase amount to the values. Add purchase amount again to values. You'll have two identical value columns. 
Select a cell in the second value column. Go to Home, Conditional Formatting, Data Bars. Choose a gradient fill. Apply it to all cells, showing sum of purchase amount too. Still see subtotals? You have two options. Turn off subtotals from the Design tab. Subtotals do not show. But notice, it turns off subtotals for the entire pivot column. So another option is to turn them back on, then select the specific cells where you want to hide the subtotals. Select the subtotal cells, Control plus one. Format cells, Custom, Type three semicolons. This hides text numbers, but keeps formatting. Add a gender slicer. Resize and format it. To make your pivot table interactive, when you select items in this slicer, you'll see the data bars automatically adjust to reflect the filtered data. Next, use filters. Instead of slicers, slicers are great but can take up a lot of space. Instead, use filters in the pivot table, drag season and location to the filters area. Use the dropdown to select values filter season to winter. Use the search box in the filter dropdown to quickly find state type New York. You can also use slicers with filters. Use this technique when you want to quickly highlight high and low values in a pivot table without needing a chart, perfect for dashboards, reports, or quick comparisons during meetings. Technique four, create matrix from roster pivot table with DAX. Here I've got a list of employees and their shift roster by date. It's in a table called Shifts, and that part will be important shortly. Now, I want to view this data in a matrix format. Let's start by summarizing it with a pivot table, placing it right beside the source data. I'll drag name into the rows area, date into the columns, and try to display the shifts to values. But notice, it only gives me a count of items, which isn't what I need. So, let's delete this pivot table. Instead, we'll insert a new one. This time check, add this data to the data model. Add name to rows, date to columns. To show shift names, create a DAX measure, go to Power Pivot, Measures, New Measure. Table name was Shifts. Measures name, Shift Roster. Now we'll use a DAX formula to display the actual shift text instead of just a count. For that, we'll use the concatenate x function. The table is shifts. The expression is the shifts shift column. We'll close the formula, validate it, no errors, perfect. Now let's click OK. And just like that, you'll see the actual shift names showing up in the pivot table matrix automatically. Now, we don't need the grand totals for rows and columns. They just combine all the shift texts, which isn't helpful here. So let's go to the Design tab and turn off grand totals for both rows and columns. Now we've got a clean matrix showing each person's shift on each date, just what we wanted. Now, what if we wanted to see which employees were scheduled for each shift? We can start by simply copying our existing pivot table just press Ctrl C and paste it nearby. Next, instead of using the custom measure for shift roster, we'll create a new one. Go to the Power Pivot tab and click New Measure. We'll name this one Staff Roster. Once again, we'll use the concatenate X function, this time over the shifts table. The expression will be the employee name column We'll use double quotes as the delimiter, since multiple employees may be on the same shift. And for sorting, we'll sort by employee names in ascending order. Close the parentheses. Check for any errors. Looks good. Click OK. Now, instead of placing name in the rows area, we'll place shift, 
And there it is. We've got a matrix showing each shift with a list of employees assigned to it for each date. Use this technique when you need to display schedules or assignments in a clean calendar style format. Great for shift planning, classroom rosters, or project task tracking by date. Technique five, count unique values using distinct count with data model. Want to find out how many different items are each category. So let's insert a pivot table. Insert a pivot table to a sheet called distinct count. Add category to rows and item purchased to values. By default, you can't get a distinct count in regular count, but you want distinct count. Delete the pivot table, reinsert it, and this time check add this data to the data model. After insertion, add category to rows, add item purchase to values. Right-click the values, summarize values, by distinct count. Now you'll see how many unique items exist per category. Use this technique when you need to count how many unique items, customers, or transactions exist within each group. Ideal for analyzing product variety, distinct users, or non-duplicate entries by category. Technique six. Default number formatting using power pivot. Regular pivot tables is having to constantly reapply number formatting, like adding commas and removing decimal places. You can set default number formatting once, and it sticks. Here's how. Go to power pivot manage. In the power pivot window, select the desired table. Click on the column, purchase amount. On the home tab, apply formatting set comma, no decimals. Back in Excel, insert a pivot table from the data model. Drag your formatted field into values. It's now consistently formatted. No need to adjust each time. Technique seven, auto-generate pivot sheets with report filter pages. Let's say you need to send different reports to different managers based on category. Normally, you'd copy the sheet and manually apply filters. Insert a pivot table. Add category to filters, add state rows, and season to column, and review rating to values. Go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, click Options, Show Report Filter Pages, choose the category filter greater than click OK. Now Excel will generate a separate worksheet for each category, accessories, electronics, and home, all done in one click. All I need to do now is copy the relevant sheet into a new file and send it to manager. You could even automate this process using a macro. This technique is also incredibly useful when you need to extract filtered subsets of your data into individual sheets for reporting or sharing. Insert a new pivot table on a blank sheet. Drag all fields to the rows area. Go to Design tab, Greater than Report Layout, Greater than Show in tabular form. Turn off subtotals and grand totals. On Pivot Table Analyze tab, turn off buttons. Add category to the filters area.
Again, use Show Report filter pages to generate separate sheets by category. These are easily refreshed when the data changes, much more efficient than formulas. So there you have it, advanced pivot table techniques that can transform how you analyze and present data in Excel. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials.